In this second vlog focused on money, we're going to be picking up where we left off in the previous vlog, which approached an attempt to understand the way humans relate to money throughout history and in the present. In this second part, we are going to try to approach a rational understanding of capitalism in itself. The first thing we can say about capitalism in itself is that it kind of functions like a superorganism. This is a superorganism in the sense that it creates a type of ecosystem, a virtual ecosystem of buying and selling, trading uh, commodities. And this ecosystem kind of has a life of its own. It kind of operates by its own principles and passes through us, but at the same time has a, uh, an existence which is universal and all-encompassing. It might even be said to be this open-ended, unitary uh, virtuality within which all of our globalization processes are being mediated. In the classical distinctions between how capitalism operates, perhaps the most useful is the distinction between use value and exchange value. When we think about the difference between use value and exchange value, we can do that in a very simple way. Use value is when capital is being used to mediate something which has a direct utility for human needs, human values, or planetary needs and planetary values. You could think about this along the lines of how many socialists will argue for, say, universal health care or universal education. On the other hand, capitalism also has as a dimension of it the phenomenon of exchange value. Exchange value is distinct from use value in the sense that it is a type of reproduction in which capitalism is merely interested in reproducing value for itself and in itself. You could think about this with the social metrics of GDP, for example. We judge whether or not a country is doing well based on its gross domestic product, how much is being produced. This is just a measure of how well the economy is doing and not necessarily a measure of how well humans are doing. You could think of another dimension of exchange value with the stock market, investing in stocks, bonds, and other forms of capital. All of these types of exchanges are for the continual growth and the continual reproduction of capital for capital's sake. Now, when we get into this domain of exchange value and we're not moralizing it, and putting a judgment saying that use value is good and exchange value is bad, or vice versa, we might see that, in fact, this domain of capital, where we are not just merely changing or exchanging commodities for commodities, but actually exchanging the mediation of commodities in order to grow capital itself, as the opening of an infinite horizon, there is actually no limit or no end to this process. Money can grow indefinitely and infinitely. There's no cap. There's no stopping it. It's just a wild and unstoppable force of, of expansion and growth. And even though it is limited by the planet and by humans in principle. In other words, it's limited by how far out of line exchange value is with use value, which can cause recessions and which can cause financial collapses. It nonetheless uses these events of collapse and crisis only to further reinvent and reinvigorate itself in new, more dynamic forms. Because of this unique capacity of capital, we might be willing here to make a jump and connect the phenomenon of a psychical drive with the phenomenon of surplus value. 
surplus value is precisely a value which doesn't directly connect or correlate with human and ecological needs, but is a value which is just purely for itself. This is a motion which mirrors, in some sense, the phenomenon in psychoanalysis of the psychic drive. In psychoanalysis, the psychic drive has no end point or desire which it is tending towards. It enjoys its motion in and for itself. You might even say it's an infinite drive. Surplus value is similar to this in the sense that it is not aiming to achieve some goal in the future which would actualize it and put it into harmony. There's no future state which would end the process, in other words. Surplus value is purely a motion which is in itself and for itself. In that sense, there is a mirroring of these two notions. I hope that this understanding of capitalism in itself was a nice supplement to the first video and gave you some insight into the type of entity we are talking about when we interact with the market and when we engage in processes of exchange in a capitalist sense. Thanks for watching.